Presented by Church Tech U, it's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, all the new ways to control ProPresenter. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you um, are really excited about some of the new possibilities that I announced in um, an earlier tutorial about everything that's new in ProPresenter, go ahead, give me a thumbs up and like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. This is one of the things that there's a certain segment of people that have been excited for, for a long time. Maybe that's you, or maybe you don't know that it's you, but you're just curious about other ways to control ProPresenter. So let's head over to my computer and I'll talk you through everything that I can show you right now. One of them is still kind of in process, but um, we'll I'll show you that and then we'll go from there. So, of course, this is ProPresenter 7.9. You can tell that it's at least 7.9 because it's got uh, these buttons up here and the looks icon up here. All that is uh, just a quick uh, way to identify it. But let's head over and look at some of the new changes that have uh, been made. So first off, we have the ProPresenter API. You'll notice that you can get to this just on the web by going to renewedvision.com slash ProPresenter slash API. So this is the official published way to control ProPresenter remotely over the network. So, um, it has all your different commands. I'm not going to go into how to use them necessarily. Maybe that'll be a future tutorial. Um, but basically, you send these different commands, and you can control ProPresenter at a certain IP address from another uh, network-connected device. This is basically how the Pro Remote works and also how the companion module for ProPresenter works. So this is a little behind the scenes. Might not seem very easy or intuitive. That's okay. The good news about this is, is that now that it's obvious, published, supported, all that stuff, I expect to see more third-party ways to control ProPresenter. So that's really exciting. In fact, I've seen in the beta group, um, Dan Owen, who is the guy that uh, wrote the module for Companion, which is software that you can put on a uh, stream deck, he made, just as a proof of concept, it's not perfect or anything, a watch app. So if you have an Apple Watch, there's a way to control ProPresenter from it. Very exciting. Something that I might try and figure out uh, myself if he doesn't actually publish the directions on how to do it. So that's the first thing is this published API. Next thing is control.propresenter.com. Now I told you there was something that I couldn't tell you everything about, and this is it, and this is why. Notice that it just says hello world. So as I'm recording this, it is April 5th, 2022, and it hasn't actually been released to the public. But You'll notice this is just in the web browser. So what this will do eventually is it will be a place where you can type in the IP address of your ProPresenter computer and control it from another uh, network connected device on the same network. So I don't have 100% um, a 100% guarantee that this is the case, but as I understand it, since this is just a web page, there's no reason why if your pastor has a Chromebook and preaches from notes on a Chromebook, he or she couldn't have um, a uh, the ability to control ProPresenter from the Chromebook. So that's kind of an exciting development that you could have basically more control than the Pro Remote app, but have it from just a regular web browser. No special app required. So that's uh, the second way to control ProPresenter is with that. 
Another way is here, let's it's hiding back here. This is the Stream Deck app. Eventually, you'll be able to just go to the Stream Deck store and uh, do a search for ProPresenter. Let's make sure that it hasn't dropped since I... Yeah. It hasn't dropped just yet, but I do have my hands on a beta. So let me show you what that looks like. So I've already installed this here. Again, as I say, eventually you'll just be able to go to the store. But right now, all you have to do is drag and drop. I've got the Stream Deck XL here showing, but the regular Stream Deck, this is another one that I made. That would work as well, and so on. So let's go back to the Excel just so that I have some uh, space to do this. And so I can have the capture icon on. I can do a clear. I can find my mouse. Um, so I can type in what it is in case the icon isn't uh, obvious to me. Find my mouse. So do it that way. Now under connection, you will need to add one when you first get here and let me show you how to do that real quick so you click on add new and you'll need the IP address and the port so let me show you where to find that we go back into pro presenter here go to preferences and then network and here's where that information is so uh, on my network it's 192.168.86.32 so I would put that in and I would put in this port 65178. Once you've done that once, it uh, should show up from then on, assuming that that IP address doesn't change. I believe you could also type in the IP address for if it's on the same computer. So one or 127.0.0.1 means this same computer. So if the Stream Deck software is always running on the same computer that ProPresenter is on, and that's where your Stream Deck is plugged in. That should work fine. So once you do that, then you could just drag these and make changes. As I say, the Find My Mouse doesn't really have any changes that you can make, but if we go down here and let's say Macro, I can type in what it is, and that might be helpful because, not there, here I've got all my macros listed by name, uh, where I have those, those down here in uh, ProPresenter. So basically instead of, you know, finding where it's located, etc., etc., I could just select uh, any of those and bring them up. Here. So the service countdown starts uh, a timer. So I could do that one. I could do um, a cut. This actually sends the command to companion to control my ATEM Television Studio HD. So that's something else that I can do. Um, basically, I've got a lot of power here using the macros. I could also, if we go down here to video input and I drug that, let's say there, I could add right there, that's my Logitech webcam. And maybe I want to call that webcam. And then maybe on that one, I want to add Another video input, but instead of the webcam, I want to add my Canon T3i, so I could call that T3i. And so all the video sources that I have in ProPresenter, I can now switch with dedicated buttons up here. Now, this won't give me preview and program or anything like that, but if I just have a couple of cameras and I know what they're showing at all time, then I can toggle between those without changing the interface of ProPresenter. So 
that's pretty cool as well. And of course, I've got uh, this here, which is uh, next in previous slide control. This one being next. See down here, next. And this one being previous. So I could have, and I can have multiples of those just like I can here. So I could absolutely have next and previous buttons here. And so if I wanted to, instead of using my mouse, instead of using my keyboard or keyboard shortcuts, I could just hit those two buttons on the Stream Deck and that would control ProPresenter. So that's pretty powerful and pretty cool. So I'll let you play with those as you'd like um, and go through the different things in here. It's really simple, perhaps not as powerful as Companion, but very simple, and the icons look great. So that's awesome as well. And finally, one other way to control ProPresenter, I mentioned this in the overview tutorial, but in case you missed it, if you go into ProPresenter and then Preferences and then Devices and MIDI Map, now there is a MIDI note for clearing the announcements layer. Might seem like not a big deal, but sometimes you just need to clear the announcements layer. And if you're uh, controlling ProPresenter with Ableton Live or some other, like a MIDI uh, foot pedal or something like that, then that's a nice little addition as well. So that's all the ways that they have added in ProPresenter 7.9 to control ProPresenter. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, so head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Give me your name and email address so I can make a login for you, and then you can learn all about the basics of ProPresenter. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.